This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. I just got my hands on one of the brand new Apple Silicon M1 powered MacBooks. And today we're gonna see how well does it do for video editors. Now, I know a lot of you guys are waiting for Canon R5 footage. Can this $999 MacBook Air play that back when my $15,000 Mac Pro couldn't? It would stutter. And yes, there's a chance that it will. Along with that, we're gonna take a look at standard 4K footage. We're gonna look at HDR footage, we're gonna look at Bruce X stabilization, all of that stuff. Now, as I mentioned, this is the base model with eight gigabytes of RAM, just eight gigs, uh, 999 bucks or even 899 for students. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the video description for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and close Final Cut first uh, because I wanna go ahead and test out Geekbench 5. This is the one for Apple Silicon. Let's go ahead and run this and see what kind of a score we get. Here are the results and wow, we have a massive 17, 18, single core score. Now, my Mac Pro gets about 1100. The best Mac that we've ever tested was about 1300. This gets 1718, and that means for very simple tasks, it's gonna be very snappy. Now, what's more impressive is the multi-core score, 7539. That actually beats out every single MacBook Pro, including the high-end MacBook Pro that you can spend $4,000 on with the i9 processor. And this is a fanless MacBook Air. If you get the MacBook Pro, which I have coming in, and I'll be testing, um, that one has a fan and it has the eight-core GPU. We're all done, and it looks like we have a score of 18,881. Now that may or may not sound impressive to you guys depending on which machine you have. That is excellent. This graphics even beats out the latest Intel XE, which was very impressive. And it is getting close to the 16 inch MacBook Pro with that 5300M dedicated graphics chip that uses a lot more power. Now let's do a quick run in Cinebench R23. This has been updated for Apple Silicon. We're gonna max out the CPU here. It looks like we got a score of 71, 68 finishing up with this test and you guys could download Cinemage R23 and compare it to your system. Now we actually ran this six times already before I did this test to see does the MacBook Air throttle because it is fanless and yes it did slow down from the three gigahertz all the way down to 2.35 where it settled after about four or five runs. And then if we averaged out all of our testing, uh, the average was 6680 as far as the score, and it never went lower than 6313. It actually went higher after that. So after throttling, because it's fanless, we're still getting really good results. And that 6680 average is actually just 5% slower than a base 16 inch MacBook Pro with that six core processor which is really incredible as far as processor performance. And now let's get into Final Cut. This is the updated 10.5 version. And I did turn off background rendering. I'm gonna start out with Bruce X, which actually tests out your rendering performance specifically for things like animations, titles, different effects. And this is where the, the MacBook Air and even the MacBook Pro really struggled because they didn't have enough graphics performance. Let's get our timer ready and hit share. You guys can see that our graphics card is being maxed out completely. CPU is at about 26% usage. And we are done. Actually, I didn't hit stop in time. You guys saw I was 24 seconds. That is really fast. Now I pulled up the previous results with the other MacBook Air that came out this year and the base MacBook Pro. The results are shocking. So the previous MacBook Air took 148 seconds compared to 24. And keep in mind, that's not the base MacBook Air. That was the one with the best graphics. This is the base model. And then the MacBook Pro, that took 72 seconds to render this compared to 24. That means that as far as rendering graphics, titles, animations, effects, LUTs for color grading, all of that, this MacBook Air, the base model, is three times faster than the MacBook Pro and more than six times faster than the previous MacBook Air 
that was the higher end version. It's probably about 10 or more times faster than the MacBook Air, at least in Final Cut. So that is extremely impressive. Now, before we take a look at timeline smoothness for video editing, both in standard 4K and Canon R5 footage, let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. We've built multiple websites and you can too with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, it is affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for your small video business or for literally anything else, go to squarespace.com slash maxuria for a free trial with no credit card needed, or use the custom link down below, and when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. The next thing that I wanna test is video stabilization. I have it all set up right here, background renderings off. Let's go ahead and click stabilize. I'm gonna hit my timer and it is flying. It is flying, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Woo, okay, so th that took seven seconds, 7.4 seconds. My $15,000 Mac Pro, it takes four and a half seconds. This $999 MacBook Air just did 7.4 seconds. Now, just half a year ago, when the previous MacBook Air was released, it took 35 seconds. 7.4 compared to 35 seconds. And that was with optimized Final Cut already. It used to take a minute with the older version. That is incredible. That is way faster than I expected. Now let's get into standard 4K footage that most people are shooting. And would you look at that? Perfect playback, not a dropped frame. The previous MacBook Air with the better graphics, it could not play back. I have two LUTs applied here and then I also have film grain applied. Gosh, okay, that's playing back as smooth as a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now let's go ahead and export this and see how long it's gonna take before it took a very long time. We just hit the one minute mark and we're at 34%. So I could already do the math on the result that we might get. I'm very impressed right now. As far as temps, it's not even that hot. Let me go ahead and pick this thing up. The previous MacBook Air, when we were playing, trying to play back and dropping frames, the fans would be a full blast after a couple minutes. The CPU would be at 100 degrees Celsius. With this one, we actually don't have access yet with software to the sensors. And the bottom, we would have a hot spot that was very hot. This thing is just warm, not hot. And of course, it's silent because it's fanless. And I'm gonna wait till it's done. It's at 100, sitting at 100, sitting at 100. Done. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, I, I don't want to tease you guys too long. Previous MacBook Air, not the base model. That had the upgraded CPU with a G7 graphics, 20 minutes and 35 seconds. The MacBook Pro base model, that took 12 minutes and four seconds. The base 16 inch MacBook Pro, three minutes, 21 seconds. Let me know what you think this got down below. If, if you're interested in playing this game, pause the video. This base model $999 MacBook Air took, let me go back, make sure I get this number right, three minutes and six seconds. Faster than the base MacBook Pro. And with that, it stayed silent and it stayed cool Wow, that is impressive. Now, of course, this is Final Cut. This is well optimized. DaVinci Resolve actually has a beta that's also optimized for Apple Silicon. Premiere Pro, we still have to wait on. I will be testing those programs with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I wanna do it on that computer, not the MacBook Air. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed and you guys have those notifications enabled. For this one, I'm just gonna stick with Final Cut because if you're using a MacBook Air, most likely you are gonna be using this optimized program. Now what I'm interested in testing is 10-bit uh, HDR footage. Now the playback is really good, way better than before, but what I'm curious about is the exporting time. Is it gonna take 45 minutes or so like my Mac Pro? Or is it gonna take three hours like the previous MacBook Air or MacBook Pro? or will it be way faster? So let's go ahead and switch to HEVC. 10-bit colors right here. We have Rec 2020 PQ for HDR. We are almost done right now. 
And look at the time right there, guys. So we got two minutes and 27 seconds for a five minute project exporting in 10 bit HDR. That is so impressive. And now I know what you guys wanna see. I know exactly what a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Let's go ahead and open up our Canon R5 footage. Let's start out with 4K30. This is 10 bit HEVC C log all I cinema 4K if we open it up right here, not UHD. And just as a reminder, this is how my $15,000 Mac Pro played it back. You guys can see all the stuttering right there. The moment of truth, <laughs> Let's, I'm like nervous here. Let's hit the space bar. Okay, those started out smooth, and then as soon as the arm would go up, they would glitch. The GP is only 63%, the CP is only 23%. Look at that, perfectly smooth. Look at that. <laughs> no, no drop frames at all. Wow, my $15,000 Mac Pro can't do this. The $4,000 iMac can't do this. And this $999 MacBook Air is playing this back perfectly smoothly. Let's, let's try that again. Let me go back here. No issues. Look at that. Okay, let's do this. Let's check the timeline. No issues. And let, just to prove it to you guys, better quality, not better performance. This is pure 4K. That is mind blowing. This is 4K 60 footage. So we have double the frames. This was horrendous before. Perfectly smooth. No drop frames here, no issues, perfect. Now I'm curious to know Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Let's go in and add in a LUT here. I'll use the Canon Log LUT. Look at that, no issues once the LUT is applied. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up correction. Let's pull down some of these highlights, get that sky back. Let me pull down some of the shadows here. Let's do that. Kick up the saturation a little bit. Uh, maybe let's go and make everything a little bit warmer, like that. All right, let's try that out. No background rendering. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> All right, let's add a LUT to this as well. Still, no issues. This is absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> now, of course, we can also shoot 8K on that camera. We can shoot RAW. I'm gonna test out Canon Cinema Raw Light 4K60, maybe some Red Raw, um, whatever else. I'll test out Premiere Pro, Black Magic Raw, but I'm gonna save that not for this MacBook Air. I'm gonna save that for the Pro because I figure if you're buying, if you're editing in those programs, you're editing raw footage, you might as well get the MacBook Pro instead of the MacBook Air for the extra graphics performance. You have the fan there for long renders, things like that. So if you guys wanna see that video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, enable those notifications. Overall, man, I am impressed. And if you're somebody that needs to do video editing on a budget, I would. I thought the MacBook Air would throttle and slow down because it's fanless, but no, this thing is running slightly warm. It's not hot at all, and it is performing way better than I expected. So I'll have a link down below if you wanna pick up one of these. I would still buy the MacBook Pro, uh, but check out those links. Check out Squarespace if you need a website. I would highly recommend them. Thank you guys for watching. I have a lot of videos and a lot of testing to do. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.